Hello everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio and in today's little art snack I'm going to share some footage that I've already shared with my Patreon students and YouTube channel members which is a quick video explaining a few highlights of the techniques I use to paint the commission I'm currently working on. Two dogs cuddling together on a couch and how cute is that little doxy sleeping on top of his buddy. Now this painting isn't done as of this recording so if you're wondering why the painting looks like it does, well it's not finished. If you enjoy this video, you'll probably enjoy being a member of my paid YouTube membership, which you can join by clicking on the button next to the subscribe button that says join. And of course, you can also join my Patreon, which makes it a little easier to find tutorials you want because I have, I'm able to have a visual index of every tutorial I've done for the past two years. And right now, I have about 50 full real-time video tutorials complete with downloadable traceables, reference photos, supply lists, and ad-free videos. Then the advantages of joining my YouTube membership is you don't have to deal with learning a new platform like Patreon. Of course, it's easy to unsubscribe from either quite easily, so maybe try both and see what you like. But let's get started with this tutorial, and then the last half of the video will be about a cool new hack I just discovered to make pattern textures, thanks to my Patreon member and mother-in-law, Janine Varner. So thank you, Janine. So here I am using my dip pen with masking, and I learned that from my friend Carol Fleury, who also has a YouTube channel here. Although she doesn't post much on there, she's more on Facebook, but this calligraphy dip pen is perfect for making little details like whiskers and eye glints, and I really enjoy using it a lot. But anyway, I'm also using it to, oops, I made a little mistake there. It got a little blob. Sometimes that happens. So you just let it dry and then you can get the blob up and try again. But I was using it to put the details in the collar. And here I'm using just really watery, almost tea consistency orange to put the underlying painting in, the underlying layer that I can then put details on top of. So uh, also this bigger dog is brindled. So I used a lot of dry on dry technique, which means your paper is dry and you don't have much water in your brush. And then you use the side of your brush to create some of the brindling. So you'll see me doing that in some of this footage. But when I'm first starting a painting, I just kind of map out where everything is. So that's what you see me doing is putting in the main markings. So later when I'm putting in more details, I don't get lost in the details of the painting. So that's a really important thing that I usually do with more complex paintings. I put in a little map like I'm doing here. And you know, you hear don't put in your darks first, but sometimes I like to do that to map things out. And then when you paint over them, it softens them. So that can be a good thing. Then I got this little doxy all wet everywhere with clear water and then I dropped in the markings and the fur color on him because I wanted it to look softer and less rough because he's not brindled. He's just a short haired dog. So it's easier to get that texture by just painting in a whole wet layer and then dropping in colors. Also like I'm doing here on the face. I got the face wet with a tea consistency mix of ultramarine blue and then I could drop in a few darker places. And then as it dries, I was able to go in with cream consistency and put in those really dark details, but they still stayed soft because the paper was a little wet, just like I'm doing here. I like to do that. I like to take cream consistency paint and go in on damp paper. And so you, they hold their detail and shape. The marks you put in hold their shape, but they still stay nice and soft. So they look natural like they would on a dog or a cat or whatever you're painting, landscape painting, backgrounds, whatever you want to keep a little bit softer. Then I'm putting kind of a gray mix around the dog and that gray will help the yellows in the dogs really come forward and pop. And then you see I put my lighter glaze and then I put a, a milk consistency and then lastly I go in with cream consistency paint as my paper is drying to put in the really darker uh, parts like under the darker shadows under the dogs and between the cushions. And here's my palette. I'm just showing you how tea consistency that is. I, I do a lot of palette shots for my Patreon tutorials and for my memberships. You will see a lot more um, close up shots. And also I usually show both my palette and the painting the whole time for the whole tutorial, unless I don't, I specifically don't need to. 
but usually you'll see both my palette and the painting while I'm painting so you can see exactly how I mix things and how thick I'm getting my paint. But here again, I'm doing that same thing where I put in tea consistency and then milk consistency and then cream consistency. Be sure to watch my video I have in my watercolor basics playlist about milk, tea, and cream consistency paint so you can understand what the difference is and how you use each to get different effects. All right, now let's see what I'm gonna do for this hack that's coming up in my next hack video. I'm gonna slow this down to real time, so this will also give you a really good taste of what it's like to watch a real-time tutorial where you can watch at least an hour, usually one and a half to two hours of real-time footage so you can paint along with me. I did some tests with this, and I think this is the perfect thing to put in some of the texture in the sofa. So thank you to Janine Varner, my mother-in-law, who is taking a lot of watercolor lessons and she's passing along what she's learning to me too. So you are the recipients. You, my students, are the recipients of some of that teaching as well. Isn't that great? So these are all really dark black spots for the most part. So I think I'll just put on some lamp black probably about milk consistency and I'm finding that the best stamp just like when I did those stamps from the Neil Engel book the first stamp you want to put on a spare piece of paper and then the next stamp can go on your painting so I'm just putting on some um, milk consistency black on here and I'll just get it all painted with a good amount. And I'm going to prime it by stamping once over here. And that gets rid of all the overly wet stamp area. And then I'll stamp directly onto my painting. Like that. Being careful not to press where there's a dot. And you can just press on it wherever you need the paint to go. Get a little bit in there. You may find that you can only do about one or two stamps before you need to reload. And some of these irregularities you get, I think that looks that looks fine. I might spray some of it to just loosen up some of it. That's fine. I'm gonna put a little bit bluer over here and make it a little bit lighter, probably. And because this is receding, I'm going to scrub it with my hand and just loosen it up a little bit. Up. All right. Thanks so much for joining me on this fun little video. And I'd love for you to subscribe. And remember, I have links to all my favorite art supplies down below. They are affiliate links. So I get a little jingle in my pocket when you buy something. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for commenting. And thank you so much to my channel members and my Patreon students for supporting this channel and making these free videos possible. So I'll see you all next time and take care. Bye, everybody.